Now it's time for our number five. Go here alone and you'll risk ending up dead in the water. You're kayaking solo in the Colorado Rockies when a distant hum explodes into a deafening roar. Your heart quickens as you head straight for the rapids. The violent currents plunge you into crashing waterfalls and boiling eddies. You're caught in a cauldron, one of the toughest stretches of Class 5 whitewater in the country. It's Mother Nature's deadly challenge, the Crystal River Gorge. Seventeen miles southwest of Aspen lies the pristine mountain paradise of Marble, Colorado. The nearby Crystal River is one of the last free-flowing rivers in the west, but its Class V rapids make it one of the most dangerous. American White Water estimates an average of 16 kayaking deaths every year, and local search and rescue have found the remains of several desperate escapes. But Henry Phillip wasn't so lucky. In 1997, while kayaking alone, he hit his head on a rock and never rolled up. Paul Teft knew Henry well. I uh, actually tragically lost a friend of mine on a stretch below here. I've rolled over before and smashed my face, lost a couple teeth downriver from here, and ever since then I decided to play it safe with a face mask. An elite kayaker and sports enthusiast with nearly 20 years experience, in 1992, Paul was on the first kayak team ever to pioneer the Crystal River Gorge. He knows better than anyone what you need to survive the fury of the gorge. Class 5 kayaking alone at any point is crazy. You need a safety team around you, you need some boaters that you can trust, partners in case you get into trouble. If you're paddling alone, who's going to help you? Whitewater Rapids are graded on a hazard scale of one through six. The Crystal River Gorge, with its violent currents and steep drops, verges on the unrunnable, a class five. That's why we rated it five on our list of places never to go alone. Today, Paul is running the rapids again. His life depends on a barrage of safety gear, face masks, life jackets, helmets, and spray skirts. The seals around the deck of the boat, keep the water out. You want a nice tight seal, and it's very important because if you roll upside down, you want to roll back up without having any water in your boat. The inner gorge is surrounded by cliffs, and if the situation gets dicey, the only way out is straight up. You'll need plenty of rope, and if someone gets in trouble, you got to have a Prussix. This is specialized for steep creaking and for big time trouble. What happens if a boat gets pinned, somebody's stuck, you can set up a winch system using this Prussix, haul it off. Once in the river, it's man against nature. This calm stretch looks benign, but don't let it fool you. Just downstream, there's all sorts of trouble. Ahead is Pine Tree Falls, where a tree fell across the river and formed a waterfall. That starts a series of drops and some serious problems. A kayak half submerged is an eerie reminder of the price someone paid. So we get down river a little ways, the walls constricted the canyon, rocks have fallen in, and the gradient gets much steeper. As soon as we get down in there, my heart starts beating a lot faster because I know what's below us. But even if you make it past the Pine Tree Falls, you have to endure the Zoot Shoot and the Inner Gorge. It's a 40-foot drop followed by an unrelenting cascade of rapids, a spot that's given Paul trouble in the past. He knows that once you make it this far, there's no turning back. Uh, Zoot Shoot, 40-foot drop. I wanted to go deep. I went deep. I went too deep, whacked a rock, knocked me forward. It's called piton and put a big old dent in the nose of the boat. Ankle's a little bit sore, but not too bad. I think I'll limp to paddle again another day. It's man against nature, with man barely making it out in one piece. The Crystal River Gorge, a wild water adventure and a place to never go alone.